I'm very expressive. Mm -hmm. So you are very expressive. Okay, now well, if oh, go ahead. No, you go. I was gonna say I think more of a red flag than just maybe not having the same communication style as you. The bigger red flag is a lack of consistency. Yeah, in text, I agree. Or so in communicating. Let's say this. Because someone has a different texting preference, cadence, call, FaceTime preference, cadence, and schedule, that's not a red flag. It, it just means one thing. They're a different human being than you. Yes. Okay. They're not your clone. They're not and your twin. You can express that you'd like to meet them in the middle. Yeah. Right? And, and that's totally a fine request. Now, when it becomes a big issue, and I, this happens, this is the way of life in dating, and you guys know what I'm talking about. They've come on the scene. You guys are feeling excited. This person is your future husband and wife. They're charming. They're attractive. You maybe go on a date. And then all of a sudden, the daily texts of paragraphs and 10 texts. Or, are, hey, how's your morning? Right. Have kind of dwindled down to five. Their responses instead of immediately back and double tap and, you know, like and triple text now an hour or it's right. a day between responses yeah they've all of a sudden gotten busy in their life yeah right and oh sorry i'm just so busy yeah i'm sorry i just i got all these things going down and it's been three days yep it's been a little more delayed the next day oh yeah like um maybe next week yeah okay and no follow-up mm -hmm. guys and girls if this happens to you, I I don't want to curse it because every situation is different. But for the vast majority, they're just not that into you. <laughs> they're not. <coughs> and I think, listen, I don't know about you, but I, I've had this happen to me. Oh, yeah. So and many times. If you lean anxious like I do, like the this is the worst. When you, I notice uh, pattern shifts in communications like right away. And it's a problem that I've had to like really surrender because I often would go down the rabbit hole of like, you know, second guessing everything. Did I send too many messages? What happened on our last date? Um, did I say the wrong thing? Am I using too many emojis? Then I start double guessing myself and that is never a good place to be because you are overthinking. And what happens is you, it creates this fear, if this is you, of being out of control or a fear of being rejected by this person. Yeah. And really you've given them too much power to begin with. Yeah, and so exactly. um, I had to really start practicing like if they change communication, okay, I'm gonna notice. How does that feel in my body? This doesn't feel that great. Okay, I'm gonna try to give them a generous assumption instead of jumping to the worst possible scenario, right? Yeah. Um, but there's a balance between that and living in la la land that like, oh, they're just so busy and, you know, they still love me and blah, well, blah, blah. I would say what you described is great. And I think what happens is this at la la land, maybe to a degree, but probably most commonly, I am just so emotionally consumed by this. Mm -hmm. When I wake up, did they text me? I'm checking my phone incessantly. I'm checking their stories. I am, I am literally... <laughs> It is through my mind all day. I am right. so distracted all I can think in about. church, in small group. After I am just consumed by this person kind of seemingly not liking me. Yeah. And growing in distance. Mm -hmm. And I get, I've been there. Have you been there? Yes. I've been oh, yeah, there like admitted, yeah. multiple times. You know, I just get so interested and in fixated on this girl. So I would just say if you find yourself there, like just you know, recognize that you've been there before it is very much most likely over. And the sooner you can come to terms with that, the more quickly you can get over it because being stuck in that pit of just wondering, daydreaming, infatuated, you know, upset, heartbroken, like people stay in that pit for a very long time yeah, sometimes. Absolutely. Like they just get stuck, stuck, stuck. We should probably do an episode of like, I'm just stuck on this person. Yeah, definitely. Because And there's tons of compassion. I've totally been there. So I would just say, you know, if you're there, that's a deal breaker, point blank. Like if it's been a week, a week and a half, like at that point, 
They're just constantly making excuses for why they're not communicating yeah. with you. It's very clear. Their actions are showing you, you yes, know, like exactly. if you've conversed with them about it and yeah. if you do ask them about why their communication has changed, I think it's very important to not attack them. Okay. Yes. Um, actually, like, I have a great script for you guys. Okay. In our program, the school of dating, we give all of our students their favorite thing, which is the texting, the the texting script guide. This thing that we give in the school of dating is like the golden ticket. And uh, everyone raves about this. They laminate it. It's like the best. But here's one texting script I will give you. This is specifically for ladies. If he said he had a great time and he wants to take you on a second date after the first date, but then he doesn't initiate a second date or he, he texts you a little bit, but he's not making that second date happen. That's a lack of consistency. Okay. First of all, cause he said he's going to do it, but now he's not doing it. Right. And I'm not talking about, is he doing it like the next morning immediately? I'm saying in a reasonable amount of time, is he setting up that next date? If it's been a week, that is not okay. So this is what I would say to him. I would say, Hey, you, I just wanted to let you know, it feels wonderful connecting with you. I loved our date and I felt so seen and connected. And for me, I am not a woman that really enjoys texting. It honestly feels boring to me. I feel much more bonded and safe with an in-person connection. I feel so excited to see you again in person. If that's not what you desire here, that's totally okay, but I will have to move forward. So this is how you avoid a texting pen pal buddy. It's a great script. Because like there are guys, I'm thinking of a Matthew Hussey video I saw years ago with like just the minimal possible investment guy. Go look it up on YouTube. It's so funny where people will just like pop in and give you minimal investment via text, but they're never actually asking you on a date. They're never actually pursuing that next step. Yeah. Text is such a low hanging fruit. It, uh, it's if, so easy. If they're not making any effort, A, in text, that's a big red flag but b if they're not pursuing forward and they said they want to take you on another date but they're not scheduling it that is a big problem okay but then they say oh yeah um i'll get back to you and they don't get back to you yeah, and then they just keep texting their actions Ooh. are revealing everything you need to know exactly so the last thing about poor communication i would just say this this is a note of encouragement because i've been there you're dating someone they haven't texted you back in two hours they finally text you back. How long do you take to reply? Oh, this is our, and we talk about this in School of Dating. Like, honestly, if you are not busy in that moment, truly, just respond back. Right if, away? Yeah. If Immediately. You, yeah, if you're available. If you, if you like heard your phone ring across the room and you're like, is it them? And you're running and you're like, I have to respond. Like yeah. that's different than like, oh, I just got this text and I'm available. I'm going to respond. That isn't a big deal. Okay. I mean, if you are responding immediately to every text, then I would say, okay, and you like have zero a life. Of, okay. Right. What if it's been 12 hours and you're saying I should reply right away? Yeah. Why not? If only if you are genuinely a hundred percent available. I'm not talking about it's the work day. I'm not talking about you're at dinner with your friends. I'm not talking about you're watching a movie. I'm talking about literally you are doing nothing in you that don't, moment. You don't think it would be desperate? Absolutely not. They might be like, whoa, that was fast. No, I don't. Are you you're you're testing me right now because you know that that's what I feel <laughs> yes. right? Okay. Because <laughs> like that's where we get into this like texting game. Like, oh he texted yeah. me. Oh, I'm gonna wait to text him back. Right, you mean and, they yeah. Take an hour. I'm going to take an hour. I'm not right. That whole you know. texting mirroring. I honestly Did you ever think, do it? Oh, yeah. Definitely. Me I didn't want to seem desperate, but <laughs> like you're desperate if you can't help but think about them and you're checking your phone constantly and can't wait for that message back, right? Yeah. You're always checking. Did he text? Did they check? Did they text? But like if you're genuinely not busy, you got a message, like respond. Like, yeah, I would <laughs> just say there's got to be a point in your adult life where you graduate and you just say, I don't care. I don't care if they think I'm desperate right. sitting by my phone or how it looks. If I'm not busy <laughs> and they replied and I, and I want to reply to them, guess what? I'm not playing this game anymore. Right. I'm going to reply. And I think uh, if you could get both parties doing that, you could have a relationship that is actually going to be serious and mature versus playing a game. Okay? The funny part is this is like what happens 